we all have areas in our home that are messy, that we struggle to keep organized. And maybe it's because we have too much stuff. Maybe it's because we haven't made the time to declutter. Whatever it might be but that's contributing to the messiness or the disorganization of areas of our home, the boundary decluttering method might help you the way that it helps me. I am Erica Lucas, welcome to the channel, and we're gonna dive pretty deep into what the boundary method is, why it works, where it might not work, and how it might help you. I use this method of decluttering, this boundary method of decluttering on clothes, puzzles, toys, games, cookbooks. I use it all over my house. And I'm standing before you in front of my closet to give you an example of how the boundary method would work in my closet. Okay, to start, my clothes, my, my shirts, my tops are on hangers and I refuse to buy more hangers. So when I am out of hangers, available things to hang, and I still have clothes to hang, that to me is a sign that I have too many shirts. So I use the number of coat hangers as a boundary for shirts. The boundary decluttering method is a way of using physical space to define what you want to keep and organize in a specific area. So a shelf, a cube, a drawer, number of hangers, I'm gonna leave you guys a link below to an article on the Spruce where I was interviewed by Melissa, a freelance writer for the, for the Spruce, and we talked in depth about the boundary method. And she used it on some clothes in her wardrobe and found that it worked. So looking at this, I have pa pajama pants and pajama shirts. If I had too many pajama pants and it was stuffed in here and it was difficult for me to navigate and get things in and out, I would use this cube as a boundary to decide, okay, 10 pants, 10 pajama pants doesn't fit in here, but seven would fit great and really make it easy for me to put on my pajamas. So I would need to get rid of three pajama pants. Let me take you to an area that the boundary method needs to work today. This is my seven-year-old's shirt drawer. He has way too many shirts. He doesn't care what he wears. So I could make these decisions for him. I consult my kids on toys, puzzles, games, etc. We also have socks in here. So that's way too many shirts for one seven-year-old. He, I've never bought clothes for this child. These are hand-me-downs um, from his older brother and hand-me-downs from two family friends who have older boys that give us their stuff. So I've never bought clothes for this child. I am so fortunate to have that blessing where I haven't had to buy this sweet child any clothes. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now is just choose the number of shirts and fill this drawer until the boundary feels comfortable for him to be able to put these away. He loves dinosaurs, so I'm just gonna keep that. This decluttering method is different than other ones because you're not focused on the emotion of something, you're focused on the physical limitation of something. So using a drawer, you're saying, I can't house in this drawer any more than makes it easy enough to put things away. And as I'm going through each shirt, which by the way, looks like this, I am making a decision to keep or to set to the side. With other decluttering methods, you're focused on the emotion of something. So does it bring you joy? Is the, you know, the KonMari method where you kind of go through your whole entire house? The boundary method is great to use because you can do it quickly. You can pick a kid's shirt drawer, tackle it in less than 10 minutes. Just grabbing the ones I know that he typically goes for. And then to the side of me, I'm putting the ones I'm not gonna put back into this drawer and I'm gonna put into our donate bin. I leave a bin in our laundry room for capturing these decisions throughout the week and the month. And then when it's time to drop everything off, it's all in one spot. I don't have to go like around the house and decide and make decisions to get rid of stuff. I've already made those decisions. I've just collected the decisions in one spot in my house. And I have done this with my boy's shirts in the past. I'll share that video with you. I'll link it in the description box below. I mean, honestly, I've never seen him wear half of these shirts because they were the back and the bottom of the drawer. And I do laundry regularly enough that 
he's just surfacing. He's just taking what's on top. And this is gonna make it easier for him to get dressed. And that's now his shirt drawer. All of this was sitting in the bottom and the back of his drawer, breaking the drawer, making it difficult, well, impossible to close. And all of this is now going to go into my donate bin. And that is how I very quickly use boundaries to make decisions. And that's even extra clutter and extra decision-making for my seven-year-old to say, no, don't, no, I don't want this one. No, I don't want this one. It's, it's taking away that visual clutter for him. This method works really well for drawers, shelves, clothes, cubes, um, storage cubes, or one of the Ka Ikea Calyx shelves to use as a boundary for space. It works great with toy toys, cookbooks, puzzles, um, in your linen closet. It, it can help you determine the number of towels or sheets you really want to hang on to if it's very difficult to get your things out of a linen closet or put your things away after they've been laundered. I don't think the boundary method of decluttering works really well for paper. Uh, papers in your house that you need to organize, keep uh, for tax purposes, life documents, death documents, uh, just stuff that comes home from school that requires your attention or your action. I don't think the boundary method works for paperwork. And the boundary method can help you get rid of stuff because that's the boundary for my kids' shirts or it can help you decide, I need to change the boundary for this category in my home because this is something I need more space for in this season of my life. Not forever. It's not a decision I have to make work for years and years. It's a decision I need to make work now until that decision doesn't work anymore or until that boundary doesn't work anymore. I stand here with all this stuff in my arms, but I just really wanna show you like this is what my boy's room looks like. And each night before we settle in for reading, we reset. We pick up stuff that's on the floor from playing throughout the day. We pick up any books that need to be reorganized. Uh, we put laundry in the laundry basket. Uh, we'll put clothes away that need to be put away from being laundered during the day. But that is that is the real life minimalish minimalism that we have here in our house. And that's not, it's not perfect. It's not clutter free all the time, but it's super easy to reset a drawer, a shelf, a room. Uh, now having decluttered all of those things, it's a lot easier now. And recalibrating my expectation of what I wanted from minimalism and the timeline I wanted clutter to disappear from our lives really had to, I had to come to grips with. I talked about that in this video here, how my minimalism timeline just wasn't what I expected it to be. And it really wasn't possible in what it, my vision was. I hope you're doing well and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.